Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our pre-service virtual meditation as we join together virtually right now to um, meditate together here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So glad you could join us either via Facebook Live or Zoom. So let's just take this moment now for the next 10 minutes to get still, to close our eyes. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you release that breath, just release any tension in the upper body, down through the legs and the feet. Once again, breathing in, releasing any thoughts of the past, the future, what is yet to come. And for these next 10 minutes, let's just give ourselves the gift of being in the now moment. Focusing on our breath, Noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. If it helps you to keep your attention focused, you might silently say to yourself, breathing in, breathing out. not trying to control the breath, just watching, just observing. And if thoughts arise, if your mind wanders, just with great compassion and non-judgment, just notice. Notice where your attention went. Be thinking remembering, hearing, feeling, whatever, just label that. Be with it for a moment and then just let it float away and bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your body temple, feeling your feet on the ground. You may want to wiggle your fingers and toes a little. Take a nice deep breath, and as you release that, open your eyes. And so to those of you who joined us after we began the meditation, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you're here with us virtually. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by our magnificent Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. <laughs> So, let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward once again. Allowing ourselves to sense beyond our physical senses, to sense our connection with life around us. Because truly, all life, all creation is interconnected because there's only one life, and that is God's life. That is that infinite vibration of love and infinite intelligence and creativity that is the nature out of which everything is created and that lives at the center of all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this service this evening, here or virtually. I know we're all expressions of this life of God and God being in all places, all things. I know that God is present, unfolding, expressing itself throughout our time together this evening. It is God's vibration of love that allows us to feel our connection even when we're not in proximity of each other. It is that vibration of love that impels those to be of service this evening. It is that impulse of God for greater knowingness and realization of itself that brings us together during this time. And so I know every part of this service supports our awakening to the truth of our oneness with God. We are uplifted and inspired by the music flowing through Sam and Margaret. I know that we are here, all of us, to hear the message that is spoken through me this evening, that I too have come to know this truth, just like everyone gathered for the service this evening. I know it is the message that awakens us all 
to that greater degree to knowing that goodness of God at the center of our being and to experience it more fully. And so I'm giving thanks right here in this moment for all the blessings that we receive in our time together. I know it's all God unfolding. And so I say, thank you, God. Thank you, life. Thank you, love. And I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
eternally grateful I will be big Beautiful Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> ah, so this evening I'm looking at this idea of tuning into spirit. I don't think we had to tune in there. I think it just came at us. <laughs> but there are times that uh, I think we probably feel like we do need to tune in to experience God. So when I was a child, especially up until the age of 10, radio played a big part in my life because um, my father, being the uh, French intellectual political science professor, did not like the idea of his children having a television uh, in the house. And so it was only at age 10 that um, we actually got one. Eventually, he broke down. <laughs> and. Also, when we were visiting our family, my dad's family in France, back then, uh, television wasn't you know, part of every household the way it was at that time in America. That's all changed today. So really, a lot of my childhood, I, uh, we didn't have a TV. And so the radio and the phonograph were the two things that really uh, were our sources of uh, entertainment. And I became very, very aware of this thing called static on the radio and how there was this dial. You know, there was this magical little thing that you could turn. And as you turned it, you could tune into a station. It could make a huge difference in the reception. And, you know, certainly had the same issue later when we got TV back in the days where, you know, you had the rabbit ears and the antennas. But, you know, with TV, sometimes the image wasn't as good, but you could still get, um, you know, you could at least hear the narrative. Or uh, sometimes if the narrative wasn't, you know, if something wasn't coming through clearly uh, with the sound, you got an image. There was something about the radio that, you know, there was this, it had to be right on for you to really enjoy it. And so I gained this really acute awareness that if there was static on the radio, it wasn't because the stations weren't broadcasting. It's that, you know, there were actions that could be taken on my part or our part, you know, when we were listening to the radio as a family, you know, adjusting the dial, <clears throat> or later with TV, adjusting the antennas, getting a better antenna, um, all that could help us to tune in and get better receptions, reception. And I think, you know, when I was young, it actually became a game. I became fascinated with this dial. Like, I knew there were stations out there, and if I really, really was careful with it, I could suddenly tune in to a station I might not have heard before. So I knew without any shadow of a doubt that the stations were there, whether or not I was hearing them clearly, if they, whether or not they were static. So why do I bring that up? Other than just enthralling you with stories of my childhood, which I know all of you are sitting there, oh, I hope Reverend Mark tells us more about his life. Um, <laughs> they're laughing. <laughs> what does this have to do with science of mind? <clears throat> we teach in science of mind that God's nature is within and around us at all times. It may not be fully realized. It may not be in full expression through us or around us. But it is a potential. It is a vibration of love, of wholeness, of abundance, of joy that is in everything and everyone, and that we can tap into it, we can open to it to experience and express it. And we emphasize over and over again, if we're not seeing God or we're not feeling that God is expressed 
in some way in our lives or in the world, it's not due to God not being there. God is God is God in every moment, in every situation, in every place. It's due to our perceptions of being separate from God. It's due to a false belief in separation from that infinite source of all good, separate, feeling separate from one another, separate from all creation. You know, that's, those beliefs in separation are like the static that we get on the radio. And we have the ability to change that. We have the ability to tune in to that essence of God's nature and to experience it more fully at any given time. Our, our conscious thought can be directed toward knowing the greater truth, just like turning the dial on the uh, radio. And the thing that, as I was thinking about this analogy, that really came up for me is how I knew without a shadow of a doubt that there were stations there, even though you know, the reception wasn't good. I, I, I think we all know that, right? When we're getting bad reception on our radios or, or whatever, we know it's not that the station isn't there to be tuned into. And yet, when we're experiencing the static of life, the negative experiences, how often do we forget that this, this is just static, that there's goodness right there to be tapped into. How often do we buy into the static? Do we get mesmerized by that situation in the world or in our lives and pulled into, oh my God, this is so difficult, or this is so horrible, or this is so frightening. And you know, we get into those feelings of feeling overwhelmed, angry, frustrated, hurt, depressed, afraid, you know, any form of dis-ease, any form of discord that we are experiencing in life is static. It's due to some false perception that's creating a temporary experience that is negative. But there's always a potential to turn that around. And I think it's amazing to me with all the self-help books, with the realm of psychology and people's greater acceptance of you know, psychology, how many people are willing to go to therapists, with metaphysics, you know, teachings like ours that remind us that there's this potential in us that's greater than our experiences. Do we just fall into, oh, I'm just so depressed or, yeah, I'm overwhelmed, or you know, this is just so horrible. What's going on? I just can't stop, um, you know, worrying about this. We allow ourselves to be driven by these emotional states, as if they have power over us, and forgetting that just like the static on the radio or the bad reception on TV, that there is nothing, nothing in the world that can diminish or overpower the spiritual nature. There's nothing that can prevent that, that station, those aspects of God's nature in us to be tuned into and to be experienced. None of the worldly conditions have any effect on the divine nature that lies in all of us. And yes, we can experience negative worldly conditions. And you know we don't have to deny that. We don't pretend the static isn't there when it's on the radio, but the spiritual essence of love, of wholeness, of creativity, of abundance that's in us is still untouched while we're having those experiences. It existed before we came into this world and it'll continue to exist beyond this human lifetime. If we remember that, if we had a sense of that as the absolute truth, just like we know that there are stations there that we can tune into even if we're not tuned into them right now, I think we'd be less thrown off by these negative situations in life. You know, our attention would go immediately to um, turning back 
into that core nature of spirit within us. You know, it's not about bypassing the human experience. It's not, like I said, about pretending that what we're going through right now isn't challenging. But, you know, as we often say here, we don't need to stay stuck in the situation. The 23rd Psalm talks about how, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. We, we don't, you know, the valley of the shadow of death refers to those dark moments of the soul that we can go through in life. But as we say, we don't invest in real estate in the valley of the shadow. We don't stop and say, hmm, I wonder if I could build a nice property here. It's you know, it's something that we experience, but we, if we knew right away that, oh, this is just an experience right now that's bringing up a lot of insecurity. Interesting, there's insecurity coming up right now. There's, there's anger coming up right now. There's fear coming up right now. If we just recognize that, but realize that it's not an ultimate power, then we would immediately go about our business of tuning in, just like we go to the radio and adjust the dial. So I think it's having that strong sense of spirit being there at the center of everything, no matter what, that helps us to think more in terms of when we're going through a challenge of, okay, there's something good to be revealed out of this. The goodness of God is still there. I just need to open up to a greater realization of that truth to have a different experience. And so that's why you know, we keep promoting spiritual practices. The spiritual practices are tools. They are the things that work like the dial to tune us into um, to that spiritual nature and to experience it more. And ideally, you know, we have a regular spiritual practice. We're not just turning to it in moments of crises because when we are regularly turning our awareness to spirit, we're more likely to notice when we're off track. And because we have such a sense of spirit, we've been reminding ourselves of that spiritual nature in us that we're gonna immediately turn to, okay, how do I come back in alignment with my true spiritual nature? How do I see this in a different way to bring forth goodness. And so, you know, that's why we take time to meditate every day. And, you know, one of the greatest benefits of meditation is not necessarily those moments. Yes, it's wonderful when we get to those quiet moments or those moments of bliss that we can experience. But the fact that we notice, we pay attention to, first of all, the impermanence of the breath, that you know, there's an in-breath followed by an out-breath, that that's continually changing. If our thoughts come up and we notice them, we realize that they're not permanent either, that we can re bring our awareness back to the breath, and that one thought is replaced by another. We observe that nothing that's coming up is really permanent. So it gives us a sense of nothing in the world being as permanent as we think it is, and that we have the ability to shift our awareness from one type of thinking to another. Doing our prayers, study, our affirmations, you know, being of service, all of these things uh, that help us to redirect our awareness to the truth of God's nature being within us at all times and to call it forth into expression you know, gratitude is another wonderful spiritual practice um, that we can engage in. We'll often tell people if someone doesn't have any kind of spiritual practice, one of the first things to practice is gratitude. Because it, and we'll be uh, talking about this more next week because on um, Thanksgiving Eve, uh, we'll have a theme around <clears throat> gratitude. But, you know, it's something that helps us to be aware of just how much good is around us, and if we remember that all that good comes from God, again, it tunes us into that goodness that is ever available for us 
to tap into, to experience, to call forth. And then there are two other simple practices that um, I wanted to bring up that I think we can do as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. One is something that helped me a lot in my corporate days. And that was, at one point, I went, you know, if God is in everything. People don't tend to think of corporate America or business as being spiritual, but everything has to be spiritual if everything is of God. And so I just started looking in my job. I started looking at, well, what are some different ways that I see God being expressed? Like, oh, as people gather you know, around the coffee uh, machine and just start talking, that's God's vibration of love and connection and sharing. As I saw people trying to problem solve, that's you know, God's creativity. As I saw teamwork, I saw the vibration of God's collaboration. I think as we're going about our day-to-day -day lives, just noticing something like, oh, that person that let me cut in front of them, that was a vibration of God's love that was being expressed right there. You know, this person that smiled at me as I went, you know, well, okay, I think they were. I couldn't see behind the mask, but it looked like they were smiling from their eyes. Um, you know, that's, that's an expression of God's love as kindness. There's so many ways that we just look and just for a moment recognize that's an expression of God. And the other is in moments of difficulty. If we're really feeling upset about something, overwhelmed by something, I know that comes up a lot for people these days, stressed about something, take a moment to just take a breath and turn your awareness to something or someone that you love. Something that makes you maybe smile. And just take a moment and feel that vibration of love that you have for that person or that activity. Feel that sense of a smile that comes forward and realize that, you know what? That's, that's God's nature in me that allows me to feel that way. That's still there despite whatever this experience is right now. It helps us to remember that there's a deeper presence of spirit than the worldly conditions we are facing that we can always tune into. And I know one of my greatest examples of this, I know some of you have heard me share this before, it was really profound for me. When my mom had her stroke, and there was a period when we had not yet found you know, a, a good living situation for her, and it just seemed so overwhelming. I wanted my mom to be in a place where she could experience dignity and the prices of places for assisted living that she needed were you know, way out of whack with uh, the budget, her budget, what she could afford. She didn't want to depend on her kids. We were really looking for a solution. There was a moment I remember waking up at like two in the morning one day feeling so overwhelmed, such despair over the situation. And I went and just sat in the living room and got quiet. And I suddenly started to realize, look at how much love is present. The caring that I had for my mom, the love of all of those who were helping out during this period of time. I just felt the beauty and the love. And when I felt that, I, I just knew somehow there was a solution. We just weren't seeing it yet. But it was that idea that as I felt that, I knew God was there. And the most amazing solution came up where she did get to live her life in a place where she was so loved, so cared for. It was within the budget that we had to work with. Everything just came together. But I know it started out of that knowing that God was there no matter what. And that's, that's the kind of being able to tune in that we want to cultivate um, on a regular basis. And so I would invite us just at least once per day over the next few days, look at something that's going on in the world around you and just see what qualities of God you might see being expressed there. You know, some joy, creativity, playfulness, whatever. Just look at that and go, that's, that's that aspect of God expressing itself in this situation. 
And in moments of hardship, like I mentioned earlier, moments of feeling overwhelmed, just pause. Think of someone or something that you love and allow yourself to feel that love and know that that love that you can feel is God. So God is there. That's God's love in you. That's God's nature in you that's untouched by the experience. I think all of these practices, and if we, I you know, would love for you to try these two that I suggested, I think these are ways that we can get beyond that static of life and tune in to that God station that's always transmitting. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And I invite you to bring your awareness to any area of your life that feels challenging, where you're feeling unsettled or unhappy. And recognize that these feelings are like static on the radio. They're just the byproduct of you somehow perceiving yourself to be separate from God. But notice that beneath these feelings, there's a desire to feel better, to feel joy, to feel peace, harmony, love, well-being. And so I invite you to recognize that that impulse to feel good is the goodness of God in you seeking to reveal itself. And now, Bring your awareness to any being, anything that you love, and allow yourself to feel that love come forth from within you. Know that this is God's love in you. It's God in you that's ever present, that's always there for you to call forth and to share with others. And know that as you keep tuning into that presence of God's nature in you, it reveals the pathway toward the greater good you seek to experience. It's always there. You just need to tune into it. And so let's join together, tuning into that truth, knowing that truth for many of the human challenges that we can experience along our journey. Knowing that God is always present in everything, in everyone, in every moment, right now through each of us gathered for this service and knowing that God is the essence of all beings. Let us join in knowing the truth that wherever there's any challenge around the changes that occur in our human lifetime, that things in the world are constantly changing, that can be unsettling, but where there's any sense of being unsettled, we know the truth that God's nature is unchanging, unchangeable. It is ever-present here, now, always. It is that vibration of God's life in which we all exist and remain eternally connected throughout this human lifetime and beyond. It is always there to be tapped into and experienced no matter what. Let us further know that this presence of the divine is perfect, whole, and complete. It is a vibration of absolute well-being that as we know this truth where there is any experience of dis-ease or discord, we know that God is there as health, as wholeness, revealing the pathway into greater well-being in this time of the pandemic. It is that solution that is always there in the mind of God to reestablish health and wholeness. It is this presence of God that is that creative impulse that we always feel to give something and to feel that what we have 
to give is valued. I know that as we know that God is always there as the infinite giver and receiver of life, that those who are feeling lost or not in their right place, unfulfilled, that that vibration of God brings them to the perfect right place, whether it be a perfect work, career, activities, whatever, where they can feel absolutely that what they're giving is of value to others and to feel fulfilled. We know that this presence of God is infinite. There's no lack in spirit. And so where there are any experiences of lack occurring humanly right now, let us know the truth that God is that infinite abundance that as we know this truth, it reveals itself and shows up as that experience of being amply provided for to be able to generously give back and take in and give back in that eternal cycle of giving and receiving of God. And we know that this core nature of God is love. And so where anyone right now is feeling separate from that vibration of love, let us know that that love is ever present, transmitting right now. And as we know this truth, those experiences shift into a greater experience of self-love, love for others, love for the activities that we engage in. For God is love eternally. And let us also know that that love is an impulse for greater good and let's honor it by setting our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for others, for situations in the world. We know that God is at the very center of each of these intentions. And as we know that God is there, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart full of gratitude for knowing this truth. That I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And you have several options on how to give. Uh, you should be seeing a link popping up right now if you want to give online. Uh, it's via our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page. You also have the option now of uh, giving uh, via text. Um, you can text the word GIVE to area code 
3419. And of course, um, I know many of you are continuing to mail in checks, or you can call in after service for 30 minutes after service and uh, make a payment via credit or debit card if you'd like to do that. Bottom line is we are so grateful for you continuing to support us in this way and uh, that allows us to be here to support you. So with that, let's join together with our intentions as we hold our gifts to our hearts and say, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to be multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So as we bring our service to a close, I want to begin by saying thank you to everyone who was of service this evening. Uh, let's begin out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you to practitioners Gail Plott and Liz Racy for uh, being there holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, thank you to our Zoom team, Alma Alvarez and Barbara Berg, um, for making sure we're being seen out there in Zoom land. And once again to Melissa Allen for her support with Facebook Live. So, so grateful to all of you that helps us to stay connected with one another. Here in the sanctuary, once again, Adam, thank you so much for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To Doreen and Blair and Alex who are working all the technology. <laughs> here to Brenda on camera and to our wonderful musical support, Margaret and Sam, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, have a few announcements. So again, just a reminder as far as the donations, if you missed it earlier, nhcrs.org forward slash give or text the word give to 818 Four five seven three four one nine, or feel free to call in after service. Eight one eight seven six two seven five six six is the church number, and we can take a credit or debit card over the phone. Thank you again for that. We have prayer with a practitioner available uh, via Zoom after the service. So if you get on, if you're not on Zoom right now, if you're on Facebook Live, get on. Uh, with Zoom, and we can put you in a breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. Uh, we invite you to email any prayer requests you may have to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call the church office. Again, it's 818-762-7566, 
Option four gives you the option of leaving a message, uh, anything that you want prayer for, and we collect those emails and prayer requests every evening and send them out to all of our practitioners. So you'll be well supported in consciousness. Uh, next Wednesday, we have a special service once again on Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, we go with the topic, we give thanks. We hope you can join us for that, where we look at gratitude and we'll have a few people sharing their uh, gratitude statements. Uh, still happening this week, so tomorrow evening, A Course in Miracles on Zoom with practitioner Jeannie Laporte. That's from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. Our grief support group, led by practitioner Carol Winokur, that meets this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. We're really excited to let you know that this year, uh, Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign and concert is going to uh, be launched with a um, uh, free concert with the world-renowned artist Karen Drucker. So you may be familiar, well, you are familiar with some of Karen's music. Uh, I Am So Blessed is one of her compositions. So it'll be on Sunday, December 6th at 7 p.m. The Zoom link for the concert and information will be on our website by Friday. And uh, we'll have, even if you want to uh, submit your pledge cards in advance, those will be online as well. So we really hope that you'll join us to make this um, our best 2020, uh, our best pledge campaign yet, and a wonderful 2021 together. Our Christmas Giving Tree event, uh, once again, we've adopted the kids at the North Valley Caring Services, and Gail Pilat is available to help people in terms of letting them know what children uh, their wishes are and aligning you with um, a child that you can support and make their Christmas special. I think this year will be such a wonderful year to be able to do that. Information on how to contact Gail, and she'll give you the details of the drop-off and how to do all of that. Um, that's available on our website. And just know that the gifts are to be returned to the church unwrapped and with an appropriate size gift bag by December 10th. Now, all of that uh, will be uh, explained to you by Gail. Um, blanket drive for the homeless, that, that's underway right now. We're accepting new and clean used blankets for the homeless, and we've started collecting them here at the church. There's a drop-off area. Uh, the distribution will be on December 20th, 26th, and 27th, and you can get details for that on our website, and um, hope that you'll participate in that. We continue to do in-person attendance for a limited number of people who can uh, be out on the patio to see the sermon out there and watch the rest of the service that happens in here. Um, so if you want, we've already taken the uh, reservations for this Sunday, but come, come Sunday at noon, you could sign up uh, through Monday at noon, sign up for the following Sunday. So again, it's really important that you make a reservation and you have a confirmed reservation before showing up since uh, we can only have a limited number of people. And um, Zoom virtual patio is still going on. 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after all of our services. The men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. Our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15. So all of that, you can get information on nhcrs.org as well as go there to sign up to get our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So with that, that was a lot of information. <laughs> I say we turn our awareness inward one more time. So once again, I give thanks to that one power, that one life, that one presence of infinite love that is God's life, God's love, and all the ways we have awakened to it and experienced it during our time together. I know that God has unfolded throughout every part of our service and that we have been blessed, that there have been shifts in consciousness that have occurred 
awakenings to that divine essence of our being that we can tune into any time and that we carry that awareness into our lives. It ripples out and blesses others. And so I give thanks for the blessings that we've received and how they multiply. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so let's join together one more time in song. Thank you for joining us. Good night.